morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, I know that these Hyperledger meetings span uh, different time zones. So welcome to the kickoff meeting for the Capital Markets Mortgage Subgroup meeting. Uh, this is our first meeting, and we're very excited to welcome all of you. Um, before we get started, I'd like to express our deep appreciation to Vipin, the chairman of the Capital Markets Special Industry Group, where underneath their umbrella, and to Karen, our, our Hyperledger point of contact. Uh, she'll be speaking later on, but thank you to the both of you for making this meeting possible and all the help that you've provided. Okay, um, first, uh, a couple housekeeping items. Um, since this meeting is taking place under the umbrella of the Hyperledger Foundation, we ask that everyone abide by the antitrust policy and code of conduct. For the antitrust policy, please avoid discussions of company specific pricing products and projects. Don't make any negative remarks about other companies or products. And according to the code of conduct, Treat everyone with respect, never discriminate, excuse me, communicate constructively, and we fully support Hyperledger's policy of openness, equity, and inclusion. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. We've already done the welcome. I'm going to turn it over after we go over the agenda to Karen to go over the Hyperledger Foundation. Then Angel's gonna do the state of blockchain in the global mortgage industry. Uh, James will cover the mortgage industry subgroup. And then I'll come back, uh, do the mortgage blockchain lab and internship update, next steps, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. So with that, I'd like to introduce Karen Otani. She is the Director of Ecosystem at Hyperledger and has been our primary contact with the Hyperledger community. And as I said, she's been a fantastic help to us. So Karen, please take it away. Thank you, Marvin. Um, I uh, appreciate um, the chance to be here. Um, I actually was suggesting us to have everybody introduce themselves. I know this is the first really official meeting of the mortgage subgroup, and it'd be great to know who's on. Um, just really quickly, it won't take too much time, but that we can start to kind of develop this community. Um, this is, of course, Marvin and Angel and James are gonna be um, leading the operational aspects of the community, but everyone here, it, the point of it is for you all to get to know each other um, and to see how you can work together in advance some of the uh, the work in the mortgage industry related to DLT. So um, I'd love to invite whoever is comfortable and wants to to just share um, where you're calling from and what organization you're with. Sure, I'll, I'll start. This is Lori. Lori, um, I'm calling from Texas, and I'm with Black Knight. Uh, and I'm also with the MISMO organization and co-chair currently of our blockchain community of practice. Welcome, Lori. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. I guess I'll go next. Um, I don't know if we're doing it in any particular order, but nope, I'll go next. So this, uh, so this is Sean Job. I'm with an organization called Factual Data. We're a uh, service provider data aggregation company um, that serves the um, mortgage banking industry. Um, uh, along with Lori, I um, am involved with uh, various industry standards within mortgage um, banking and housing finance, specifically uh, one of those being MISMO, um, where I co-chair um, their blockchain community of practice effort. So i um, just here to kind of see what uh, everyone is uh you know, what, what's going on with Hyperledger in regards to DLT, and I myself am calling from uh, Massachusetts. Awesome. And let's keep it brief so we do get everybody on. All right. Anyone else? Can I introduce myself, Karen? Yes, please. Ciao, Karen, by the way. Uh, this <laughs> is Andrea. Hi, nice making acquaintances with you. Let's start talking to you, by the way. Uh, I'm Andrea. 
I'm the current chair of the Hyperlife Trade Finance Day. Uh, glad to be here today, just making acquaintances with uh, the rest of the team. Uh, I had a call earlier in time, a few weeks back in time, with Marvin and Angel. I was pretty curious to see what's going on in this space in capital markets. I'm a close friend of Beeping. So glad to get to know you all, guys. And I'm calling from Italy, Florence. Yeah, before we go on to the next group, uh, I want to say welcome, Andrea, and I think you owe us a beer. What? Sorry? <laughs> I said welcome, and I think you owe us a beer from our first conversation. Well, actually, I owe you a glass of wine, a, a, oh. great glass, a huge glass of wine. The wine yep. is deal here, man, so you have to come here in, in person, share a glass of wine with me, a red one, of course. Of course, okay. Nice to see you again, Marvin, by the way. Glad to be here today. Yep. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Maria Manaro. Um, I work at Home Lending Pal. Um, we are a, a, <clears throat> a, a oriented towards borrowers and trying to help them um, start on the, on the um, mortgage process. So um, I'm really interested in in how to how we are how we are and how the industry wants to apply blockchain to the uh, to the mortgage process. And I'm calling from Buenos Aires right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Bienvenido. Gracias. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump off mute and say hi? Um, while someone's waiting to come off mute, uh, Marvin, could you unshare your screen, please? Thank okay. you. So I can get into my screen. All right. Um, anyone else that want to say hello and introduce themselves? If not, um, no problem. You can um, participate in whatever way you want in um, these groups. Of course, since this is a new group, it's great to have um, everyone get to know each other um, and uh, hear where you're from, what you're working on, what you're interested in, because um, your, your, uh, you know, what you wanna get out of this, your participation is gonna determine what this group works on um, and what this group focuses on. So, um, thank you to everybody and feel free to type in the chat too um, if you want to introduce yourself that way. So I'm going to do just a very quick introduction to the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, some of you may be new to Hyperledger and um, so I want to make sure I got an overview and then I'm going to share some of just the tools that we use as part of our special interest groups here at Hyperledger to help you all get started. You can get all these slides by email, Marvin can send them. Um, and you can reference them later. And of course, we also have the recording. So Hyperledger Foundation is this global um, cross-industry consortium of projects, member companies, and communities that are working to advance enterprise blockchain technologies. Um, we are um, an open source nonprofit, and um, we are particularly focused on the enterprise uh, applications of distributed ledger and multi-party systems. We are um, housed within the Linux Foundation, um, which has been growing open source technologies in, um, for more than 20 years. And um, Linux technologies are part of everything that you use in your daily life, essentially. We are neutral and um, foster collaborative community like this one. Um, so it's never any play to play um, at, at Hyperledger. We always have to just display our antitrust policy. Um, we are open to anyone who wants to participate, um, whether and, and contribute in any way that they, they see um, fit. And what we're working to do is really to build um, a sustainable um, industry standard code. We have um, uh, applications of our technologies being implemented in a variety of industries, all of the ones above and, and others. Um, of course, here we're, we're housed within the capital markets special interest group. Um, 
topics. And, um, and so you'll be hearing more about those topics, but I will share a little bit later on some of the things that are happening on other industries. In terms of our technology, it's a very modular approach. They're very flexible. Um, uh, it's focused on being able to reuse common building blocks, um, building a diverse, diverse developer community, um, and um, being able to experiment rapidly. We have a number of ways in which that can happen. Sometimes our SIGs actually can get involved in um, making suggestions on how the technologies advance or are built. Um, or even doing uh, POCs themselves. These are all the current code projects at Hyperledger. We have 18. Um, uh, it, 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 it can seem a lot to a newcomer, so don't feel like you have to get to know all of these. Um, uh, I'm sure when, as the group starts getting into talking about specific use cases, you're probably going to focus more on a couple of our DLTs, such as Hyperledger Fabric or Hyperledger Besu. Um, but these are this is sort of what the what there is out there to explore. And these technologies do a variety of different things, both at the base layer and um, at the uh, sort of tools and resources at the top layer. I know many of you may be new to open source, new to Hyperledger, new to participating in our community groups. Um, I want to make sure that you know that we are. Um, we have the code of conduct that Mar Marvin talked about in the beginning, which is essentially about being um, kind, respectful of everybody, making sure everyone has a voice um, and is, is considerate. Um, but we also want to make sure that people who are new feel comfortable, that they feel comfortable asking questions, um, that they feel comfortable getting involved in whichever way they can. You don't have to be a developer to get involved. You don't have to be um, an expert to contribute. There are many ways for um, newcomers to, um, to really get, to, to really contribute a lot to this group. Um, so don't hesitate. Um, feel free to um, take initiative, or you can also just sit back and kind of watch how things go. The first thing to kind of getting started into using our tools in the community um, is setting up your Linux Foundation ID. Um, if you want to do that right now while I'm talking, I'd encourage you to do so just so you get it done. Um, you just go to identity.linuxfoundation.org um, and set up a username and a password like you do on, uh, on every website. Um, and that really is what allows you to use a lot of our different tools that I'll cover in a minute. So this group has a real time chat. It's on uh, our tool called Rocket Chat. It's like an open source version of Slack. Um, you'll be using the Capital Market SIG channel um, uh, for that. We also have uh, the mailing list here. You can post the mailing list and you want to especially make sure that you subscribe to the mailing list so that you get um, notifications about any changes in the um, and the meetings, the agendas, um, but also um, each group kind of decides how they like to interact and engage. Some groups like to use the chat a lot. Some groups like to do a lot of um, sort of back and forth or discussions on the mailing list. Um, and some really just do it on the calls. So um, it's up to you how you end up using it. We also have a page on the Hyperledger Wiki for this group as well. This is where you're gonna find the description of the group. This is where you're gonna be able to create pages for the different activities that you do. And also there will always be a page for um, the meeting notes and agenda for each meeting where the agenda will be um, and also the recording will get posted after the meeting. So these are all the links to those pages. Um, we have a couple ways in which you can get um, the meetings on your calendar. So one of the ways is going to our wiki at wiki.hyperledger.org. And on the left hand side, there's a calendar of public meetings and you find the next meeting as indicated here and you just click copy to my calendar. If you have a Google calendar, it'll open that and you can save there um, or you can download a file. 
The other way is to um, go to our list page. This is our mailing list page. So you'll be on the Capital Market SIG list page um, and going to the calendar there where you can download um, that particular event or also, as you see below, subscribe to that calendar. So there's a couple ways you can get that. This group doesn't have a recurring meeting set up. So that might be what you end up talking about later today is getting that recurring meeting set up and then you can um, uh, download it once we put that in the calendar. I'm just gonna touch quickly since you're all kind of new to this community um, on a few of the other groups that we have. Um, you know, obviously you're, you're, you're here because you're interested in this topic um, but something that we're trying to do, and um, a few of our community members here can attest to that, is really making sure that every that there's a broader view of what's going on in the community, so that they're not people aren't working in their own silos. That there's a lot of overlap, right, in what happens in the mortgage industry and capital markets and others as well. So we have uh, working groups which are focused on a bit more technical topics. Um, we have our technical steering committee. This is this is the 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 group that um, manages the overall um, uh, operations of Hyperledger's uh, code projects, essentially. Um, but we have a number of other groups that focus on the architecture or identity um, and other topics as well. And then within the special interest groups, we have a number of groups um, along different industries, like the ones you saw on the first slide. Um, capital markets, of course, but also healthcare, telecom, media and entertainment, um, trade finance. Andrea, he, he's from the trade finance group. Um, so it's great that he's here because he's essentially doing what I just said is, you know, kind of collaborating with other groups and cross pollinating which is what we want to see more of. So all these other groups operate the same exact way in which this one does, totally open for you to participate, show up. You can show up to the meetings, you can join the mailing list. Um, you're, you're, you're welcome anywhere you wanna be. Finally, we do have regional chapters. These are groups that um, are aligned a little bit more um, with either a language or a region. Um, and so if you've got, um, um, you know, if you speak, we have, for example, we had Maria from Argentina. So I'd invite Maria to join our Latino America chapter. Their meetings are in Spanish. They do a lot of um, use case discussion and, and information and knowledge sharing um, in Spanish within that region. It's, it's really great. I'd encourage you to join them. There are a number of different ways in which you can participate and I'm not even gonna to touch on half of them here. Just being here today is, is considered participation and contributing to our community. Um, but if there's other ways in which you wanna do that, um, one way is uh, joining a local meetup group or leading a local meetup group. We have meetup groups all over the world um, so I know you're all calling in from many different places. There's probably one near you. Um, and they're always looking for volunteers, people to help organize events, um, speak at their events. So if there's anything that you think um, you'd like to do more locally, we'd welcome you to do that. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Karen. That, that was extremely useful information and, and it really uh, underscores uh, the nature of the Hyperledge group. It, it's a very open group, very sharing, and that's something we're definitely uh, appreciative of. So uh, with that, um, to you. let's dive back into our agenda. Let me share my screen again. Okay, um, before we actually did dive into the agenda, I, I wanted to speak a little bit about the opportunity that uh, we see before us in, in blockchain. Um, I, I know that this is going to be um, familiar information to quite a few of you that are already familiar with mortgage, but uh, also wanted to make sure that everyone had the same base of information for people that don't have a mortgage background. I mean, trust is at the heart of any financial transaction. Okay, that trust is often based on the application of technology. There are a number of actors in the mortgage value chain and each relies upon technology to provide the basis for that trust. Blockchain with its 
excuse me, decentralized and distributed technology can provide this trust in a more efficient fashion. Okay, uh, on this slide, uh, this depicts how mortgages are tied to fundings and then turned into securities and then traded and retrade. A homeowner gets a mortgage from a mortgage banker. That mortgage is bundled into a mortgage-backed security. You can see that in the middle. And then that's traded on the secondary market. This flow of funds highlights the relationship between the mortgage industry and capital markets. And it really makes sense that we're a part of the capital market SIG. Okay. Um, this next, or excuse me, as the previous slide showed, there are a myriad of actors that drive the flow of funds. This slide focuses more on the origination side, and we wanted to show how a mortgage starts with the consumer. And as you'll see further in this presentation, there are blockchain point solutions throughout the cycle, as well as other opportunities that would benefit from the application of blockchain. Now, we're not saying that blockchain it can solve all of the mortgage industry's problems, but this subgroup is intended to identify those use cases that lend themselves to the implementation of blockchain. Um, so with that, um, the next item on the agenda um, is the state of blockchain. And the next speaker is Angel Albin. As he said, he's the president of Zaventis, chair of the mortgage subgroup. And he's going to be covering the state of blockchain in the global mortgage industry. Angel. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, I'd like to thank Karen and Vipin for all your support in creating the mortgage subgroup. And I want to thank everybody who is here today and will be watching uh, in the future. So definitely this is an open forum. You can ask questions at any time. Um, I think what Marvin just showed us is that there's two sides of the mortgage, right? So it's the origination of the mortgage, right? Going through a process. And then once that mortgage is created, it's actually now a financial instrument, right? And so that's where we enter the capital markets world. So when you think, when we, when we start thinking about mortgage blockchain opportunities, we're really gonna be thinking end to end. Right, so not just servicing post closing worlds, but also the capital markets, secondary marketing worlds, the rating agencies, the uh, investors, the custodians, you know, everybody that's part of that. So, thank you, thank you, Marvin, for that. Um, yeah, just so, uh, so as part of the mortgage subgroup, we're going to have a research arm. And so, we want to invite everybody who does research, read research, or just press releases, right? Uh, we want to have a central place where we can go to. So like Karen said, once you create your, uh, your user ID, you'll be able to log into the mortgage subgroup wiki. Um, and that's going to be our central uh, point where we're going to be sharing information. So today on that site, we've already populated some mortgage industry research. So I'll just highlight a couple items that are on there. Um, and they're all global. Hyperledger is a global organization. So we're going to start with a global perspective and then depending on the use case or the country or the opportunity, then we're really going to drill down into that, that specific uh, environment, if you will, right? Um, so we have uh, research from the IMF on real house prices over the past year for over 250 countries. We have the Global Housing and Mortgage Outlook of 2021 by Fitch. That's a great research report, give you some perspectives on the global markets. We have another IMF report on real house price indexes. So again, we want to create a research arm so that we, so we start using data and research to inform our uh, opportunities as we explore blockchain use cases uh, in the global mortgage uh, context. I think the other, um, I, I'd just like to share maybe a little bit about my background. So I, I started in mortgages in 1992. My mortgage banking career in 92, worked in servicing capital markets um, and originations. In 99, actually 98, I joined the Global Markets Group and uh, we were looking for global expansion. So we were researching uh, housing finance systems around the world. I think we researched like about 200 countries. So when I was doing all that research, the one word that came to mind was like, man, I hope this results in some travel. 
right? And so that, that, that work, that body work actually resulted in the largest global mortgage JV with Barclays. I got the privilege and opportunity to move to London, England and live there and meet a lot of new peoples, experience a lot of different countries, really see firsthand how global mortgages are done. And we were in a very unique position where we can cross pollinate best practices and ideas from one country to another and one organization to another, et cetera. So it's very, very exciting. And so when we started talking about Hyperledger, the mortgage subgroup and how it's global in nature, you know, that little thought did come up travel, right? But it's really exciting to be able to uh, work on a global basis again. And Andrea, we had a great conversation a couple of weeks ago. We're going to continue to nurture that. We met with other folks from around the world, India, uh, Pakistan, uh, Honduras, Mex uh, Honduras and Mexico, uh, the UK. So um, really, really excited for that. So here, this slide is just, uh, it's just a select sample of our first scan, right? And so if you see that there's other activity in there, please let us know. If you join the group, just send us an email. Our contact information is in the wiki as well. You can forward the press release or, or the research paper. Uh, We'll, we'll establish uh, procedures for that. But let's talk a little bit about what is the uh, global mortgage blockchain activity. There is a lot of blockchain activity uh, around the world, right? We're all hearing about crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all these different crypto exchanges, right? But you know what we're really here to talk about or explore and learn is blockchain for the enterprise, right? Blockchain for business, right? And so this is really gonna drill down into global mortgage. And so, our scan identified that that story begins, at least on a global basis, it started in, in, in 2014 in the US, um, but uh, let's focus on what we see in the uh, non-US sector, right? So in China, Bank of Communications um, are issuing blockchain mortgages. It was a small no nominal amount, less than 2 million US dollar transaction, but that was their start. Uh, again, uh, in Hong Kong, Bank of China, Hong Kong, they issued, um, mortgages that are blockchain based 85 percent of their mortgages um, uh, use a blockchain valuation technology and they're going to be expanding that into the mortgage space as well in 2020 russia announces that they uh, through their blockchain and through their consortium and master chain capabilities are going to be looking to issue mortgages on on their blockchain platforms and in 2021 this is actually something that you shared with us uh karen right so spain um announce a new bill that's gonna allow crypto for investors to be able to purchase mortgages and assets using crypto, but it's also going to allow mortgage borrowers to make their payments using cryptocurrency. So that's what we see on the global front. In the US, a little bit more activity in the US. Uh, the story starts in 2014. That's really our first pioneers, right? So hats off to FATCOM and all the early uh, uh, innovators and, and leaders in that organization. And actually to anybody who's all these participants, right? We're, we're here rooting and cheering them on. Um, but they, they, they came out, came to the market with a blockchain technology it was actually released in 2018. So they started in 2014, released in 2018. So this shows that it does take time, right? Uh, takes time to implement technology, go to market. Uh, 2018 figure uh, started, they've announced that they, uh, through their platform, they were able to achieve a uh, little about, about 110 basis points in savings in the actual origination and settlement of home equity assets. Uh, Fluidity came to market in 2018. They were purchased by Consensus. That's, that's a pretty big move there. So they acquired, Consensus acquired some deep mortgage expertise there. And so we, we see uh, good things coming in the future from that. 2018 Liquid Mortgage announced their post-origination mortgage ecosystem. So what that means is that they're going after a very, uh, very specific mortgage sector. It's going to be non-GSC. Um, they just did their first with their partner, Redwood Trust. I'm going to fast forward a little bit, but um, in 2021, they announced the first securitization on this uh, Liquid Mortgage blockchain platform of 500 jumbo loans in the U.S., um, so that's really, really exciting development. Um, also, what we see in our scan is uh, in Riverside County, this isn't mortgage related, but it's really important because it's adjacent to the mortgage and it's critical to making a mortgage uh, is we need to have clean and clear title. Um, and so Riverside County, one of the largest counties in the United States, 
announced a blockchain initiative, uh, a transformation of their entire record system using blockchain. And um, we see that as a, as a promising sign. Uh, other notables in 2021, Jenny May, largest, uh, 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 largest uh, non-GSE uh, liquidity player out there uh, of FHA and VA loans. Um, they announced a blockchain project. Fannie Mae issued underwriting guidelines uh, that's going to allow crypto uh, as a form of down payment, but I'm not going to get into the, uh, into the details of that. There's some criteria how to convert that crypto to, to U.S. dollars, uh, but we see that as a good sign. These are promising signs. There's more activity in 2021. Uh, there's others uh, that, uh, that we're probably missing, but again, if you guys see anything that's out there, please let us know. We'll add it to our research. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Go back. Okay, so there isn't uh, right now any specific global market, uh, global mortgage investment trends, right? We are reaching out to the various uh, research organizations to see if we can, if we can create that. Uh, or, or be able to create a segment for that so that we can track it for research purposes. Um, we all need research. We all need data for our business cases. Uh, but this is hot off the press. This was just released this past Tuesday. This is from CB Insights. Um, the global investment trend, according to CB uh, Insights, you know, prior to 2021, on average, the 19 and 20 was 3 billion, right? 2018, there was a little bit of uptick. That correlates a little bit with the activity that we saw in the prior slide, but just for the first nine months of 2021, we're at 15 billion. Uh, that's about a 5x increase compared to 2020. There's other research that indicates that the global investment uh, for blockchain technology, it could be in the 30 million, uh, I'm sorry, 30 billion range uh, in, in, the, in the next uh, five years. So that's uh, definitely interesting and promising. We haven't had the time to drill down into the investments. Who are these investments? Who's investing in them? What type of investments are there? Just on a cursory review, about 50% of that 15 billion is going to cryptocurrencies exchanges and NFTs. What we did see in there, there are some uh, blockchain as a service. There are some point solutions. There's some blockchain tools, right? But we're gonna, we need a little bit more. This just came out on Tuesday. We need a little bit more time to drill down on that. Uh, and be able to report back to you in terms of what we're seeing. And again, this is all, we're trying to provide a global mortgage picture. So we're gonna, anything that's mortgage related or mortgage adjacent, we're gonna be pulling that data out of there so we can feed it uh, to this group. Okay. Let me stop here. Any questions, comments? All right, let's move on to the next slide then. So this is interesting, right? So um, global mortgage blockchain adoption, where are we, right? So the short answer, it's early, right? I think we all know that, right? Everybody's on this journey, different parts of the journey, right? And um, so in, in working with different groups and different organizations, we're talking about adoption, right? There's different views out there. Uh, there's really nothing off the shelf, right? There isn't like a vendor we can like call right now, get a proposal tomorrow and start implementing uh, next month or next quarter or anything like that. Um, but soon there will be. Um, so what is happening here is I invite you guys to learn about the hype cycle. If, if you guys don't know about that, pretty interesting. It's more about the psychological, uh, you know, how, how the psych psychological uh, thinking or impacts of new technologies, right? And then I think we're all familiar with the technology adoption lifecycle below. And what this does, it stacks them on top of each other, right? And so what we see is that we definitely see some correlation here. And so how can we use this to help us understand what's happening in the global mortgage blockchain adoption world? Okay, so in our research, we kind of segmented everything out, right? That's mortgage related. So anything that is non-mortgage is gonna be down at the bottom. And in the first part of the curves of the innovators or the, or the technology trigger, right, is our first generation system. So these are our POCs that got promoted to pilots, that got promoted to production, right? And what we're seeing actually a consortium in the US, which is insurance based, they're actually entering their third generation and they're moving to hyperledger. 
So we def definitely other sectors within the global financial markets, insurance, capital markets, payment systems, settlement systems, there's definitely traction from a blockchain perspective, uh, from a blockchain perspective. And so, and a lot of those big players have mortgage divisions, right? So that mortgage, that blockchain knowledge is going to start to trickle down. It's going to start to get shared and one vertical is going to start working with another vertical. So we're hoping that that's going to create um, uh, opportunities to bring more blockchain technology into the mortgage sectors. Um, I'm sorry, Marvin, you're going a little fast there. Um, okay, so um, down at the bottom, right, where, where are we from a global mortgage uh, standpoint, right? So we're in the first generation. Uh, we don't see in our scan, we haven't seen second generation systems. Again, we invite the community to share their research, share information so we can add to this and we all have a collective understanding of, of where we are from a global uh, mortgage blockchain uh, perspective. Okay, thank you. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so this is a journey. This is a, a definitely, a, it's about driving adoption. It, it is early, there are promising signs. There's more investment, there's more interest, there's uh, solutions. Our first securitization just happened, right? So a lot of things are gonna start to pick up speed here. Um, what we're hearing, and, and we're reaching out to all these individuals because we wanna invite them to A, join this group, and as appropriate to come and share their insights and best practices. And in our discussions with various players, you know, what we hear is, you know, you got to start small, right? Build a small team, iterate, right? Look for expertise, think ahead, because as you start to scale your projects, right, you're going to run into challenges, right? Talent, right? To, uh, budget. So start thinking where, what, you know, start building a, a roadmap is, is some of the things that we're hearing. Organizations that don't have a budget, you know, they're doing um, brown bag lunches, right? They're joining organizations, organizations like the Hyperledger, other organizations as well. Um, but really the, the message here in terms of driving adoption is we're all on this journey together. Let's, let's all work together to uh, inspire our, our peers, colleagues and organizations uh, to keep moving forward and identify those use cases. All right, thank you. Next slide. And so here we're going to have a little fun here, right? So I grew up playing Legos, right? And, you know, I grew up in, in the business world connecting the dots, right? So we made a little joke about this. Now we're connecting blocks, right? And so I kind of feel like I had a full, uh, you know, uh, full circle experience here, right? Working with uh, blockchain blocks and trying to put them together. Um, but it's about perspective, right? You can look at this uh, mess of Legos and I have visions of my room when I was a little kid probably look a little messier than that, but it's about perspective, right? What can we use with these building blocks? What can we build? That's a great question. Next slide. And I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California, and that is a Lego city representation of Los Angeles, California. So I hope you find this uh, informative. I hope you join our group. I hope you contribute to the research and we look forward to uh, working with you and supporting you. Thank you very much. Uh, for the next item in the agenda, I wanted to introduce James Hendricks. Uh, he has over 20 years experience in the mortgage industry. He's worked in origination, servicing, project management, and technology. Marvin, thank you for that introduction. Happy Thursday, everyone, and thank you for joining today. Um, as Marvin said, my name is James Hendrick, and I wanna take a minute to walk you through the uh, mortgage industry subgroup charter. We move on to the next slide, Marvin. All right, perfect. So the primary focus of the mortgage industry subgroups to bring together a global community to address technical and business level challenges across the industry. This subgroup's coordinating across academic, business, technical, and industry related expertise. And we're working on blockchain education, use case identification, proof of contacts, our, our proof of concepts and production implementations. You can see our purpose, vision, and mission statements on this slide, as well as a link at the bottom directly to the uh, subgroup uh, wiki. Karen's been kind enough to post in the chat both links to the wiki as well as links to how to set up your 
uh, Linux Foundation ID. So do take an opportunity to download those chats, um, keep the, the links around and mark them as favorites for yourself. Next slide, Marvin. All right, so let's take a look at the mortgage subgroup landscape. So from origination to servicing to the collateralization, the mortgage life cycle has a complex ecosystem involving numerous parties, including originators, lenders, investors, regulators, and a whole slew of network providers. You can see on the lower half of this slide from originate, service, and issue down, um, the number of uh, characters that are actors that are actually involved in this process. In fact, the next slide we'll go to will blow out that mortgage eco ecosystem a little bit. But everything from people involved from application processing, underwriting, closing, funding, and post-closing to regulators, industry associations, things of that nature. This slide kind of encapsulates how everything does ultimately roll up under the capital markets SIG. Marvin, let's go to the next slide. So I'm actually borrowing this next slide from our research team. It demonstrates the various actors involved in the mortgage industry. And as you can see, there are quite a few. You know, as Marvin mentioned earlier, the complex, this complexity of actors creates trust and transparency issues for all of the parties. There's no clear method to track end-to-end -end activities. So each party must individually maintain their own independent databases of customer information, loan transaction, third-party information. Data has to be validated and revalidated when shared between parties. And of course, financial transactions need to be reconciled. Blockchain can address many of the issues in the life cycle of a mortgage uh, with its decentralized distributed ledger um, that's both immutable as well as auditable. Next slide, Marvin. So as we think about the scope of the mortgage industry subgroup, um, we're really focused on promoting education across the business and technology partners, government agencies, and service partners. While we are under Hyperledger, we are application agnostic. So we are looking to further blockchain development across the mortgage industry, um, but we are not here to preach or lecture for a specific uh, technology solution. That's actually through education. We're looking to not only help provide and direct, but we're also looking for others to come to the table. We're also looking to open up a form of communication and networking across industry participants. Um, and through this, we seek to identify specific opportunities where blockchain technologies can meaning, meaningfully advance the state of the industry. We want to provide a foundation for real-world use case identification, blockchain technology alignment, and, of course, operational fit. And the next slide, Marvin. So relative to the meeting cadence, um, Karen mentioned this a little bit earlier, we are going to be meeting on a monthly basis starting in January of 2022. Uh, it'll be the second Thursday of each month at this exact same time, so 9 a.m. Pacific. 12 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Central Time. I do encourage you to access the link to the industry subgroup. You're gonna find all of this information there as well as more information, research information that Angel was referring to. You'll have recordings of this presentation and other presentations as well as copies of the decks. Um, and you'll, as Karen indicated, you'll have access to calendars and uh, other additional information. So. Do check out the links within the chat, um, sign up for the subgroup, pick up your Linux Foundation ID if you have not, and we look forward to having you join us in the beginning of the new year. Marvin, I'll pass it back over to you. Thanks, James. Uh, that's an excellent overview of the mortgage subgroup. Uh, the next item on the agenda is we want to introduce the framework for what we're calling the Mortgage Blockchain Lab and the Blockchain University Program. We'll provide more information on this in the future, but we want to introduce it today. Um, the lab is a multifaceted lab and encompasses education, a portfolio of POCs and pilots, and Seventis services. For the university program, we've established a relationship with three Latin American universities and, to help them develop a blockchain curriculum 
And as a part of that curriculum, we've hired our first cadre of undergraduate students and we'll introduce them in the following slides. For R&D, um, we're developing a, a list of POCs and, and pilots, both on the public and private side. So uh, again, this is just intended to be an introduction and we're gonna go into this in more detail in future meetings. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Maria and Guillermo, and they're gonna talk about our university program. Well, good morning, I'm Maria Barahona. My colleague Guillermo Hernandez and I are interns in the IT department at Cevantes for the Blockchain Lab. We are from San Pedro Sula, Honduras. We are last year's system engineering students at Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Honduras. Throughout our learning path, we have participated in school projects that have been useful to learn the different processes and stages that involve the development of software. For example, uh, we have the architecture of hotel lighting and access control. The main goal of this project was to create a high availability server that could be always running. In order to do this, we deploy a master-to-master -master replication on MySQL, and also we used the Heartbeat service on Ubuntu machines. We have a purchase department management project. This consists of creating a program that automizes the main processes of the purchase department for a medical product store. We've gained math and physics knowledge oriented to computer science. Among the skills and knowledge that we have learned, and we can highlight the design and creation of networks, databases management, programming, and last but not least, IT security. For us, this internship has been a great opportunity to go through this world of blockchain and to learn this cutting edge technology that opens the path to a new era. So now Guillermo is going to give you a brief walkthrough of what we've been learning in Cervantes and some of the technologies that we have been using as well. Okay. Hi, I'm Guillermo Hernandez. In the two months that we have been in the internship, we have created test environment in Windows and Linux, where both have been successfully tested with blockchain technology. Also, we have tests and implement smart contracts with some examples like us transfer basic to transfer assets from one owner to another. Popcar to add information to the database and test network where we create nodes, channels, and organizations for the blockchain. And with Firefly, we got the communication between nodes. As members of the blockchain lab, we've been focused on the research and learning of the different technologies that make up the blockchain. For example, Hyperledger Fabric, a blockchain framework to develop blockchain solutions. And Firefly, that enables developers to build blockchain apps for enterprise likely faster by allowing them to focus on business logic instead of infrastructure. Different programming language such as Node.js and Python, database like CouchDB and closed services like AWS. Among the different source of information that we in being consulting and studying, we can list the following. Hyperledger Fabric and Firefly documentation, uh, courses given by the community of Hyperledger Latin America. Um, all these elements have been helpful in our learning path to find the benefit of the existing case studies to put them into practice. Back to you, Mary. Uh, thank you, Guillermo. Um, and, and thank you, Maria, for uh, that overview on what you guys have been doing. Uh, the next item on the agenda is we wanted to talk about next steps. So what would we like to do with the mortgage subgroup? And, and really, 
we've broken it up into a couple areas. We want to continue the outreach to outreach, excuse me, to potential participants and interested parties. And this includes uh, private public companies, academic institutions, as you guys have seen, and also to regulatory bodies. This outreach will also include reaching out to other groups within Hyperledger. And Karen mentioned cross-pollinating with some of the other industry groups. And that's something we've already started to do. I've sat in on meetings with Climate Action Group, healthcare, supply chain. There are some really interesting activities within those other groups that I think we can bring to bring into mortgage and, and really leverage. So that's one of the key uh, next steps. Uh, we also wanna start building out uh, the future uh, agenda. Um, we would really like the future agenda to be driven by the mortgage community, to you guys out there that are participating. If you're interested in specific use cases, training or topics, please let us know. We'll add them to the future agendas. And if you want, you guys can be the ones to cover them. If you're interested in pursuing a specific blockchain uh, application or, or idea for your firm, again, let us know and we'll do some knowledge share. Hyperledger has an extensive GitHub repository and their technical forums are extremely helpful. If you're a vendor and would like to present your mortgage solution, let us know about that as well. And, and lastly, any recommendations for future speakers? I already have my own list of speakers I'd like to hear from, and they're from some of the companies you've already heard about, but we want to make this as interactive and, and as educational as possible. So as you can see, the future agenda can span a wide array of topics. One of the things we'll try to do is to organize future meetings such that we'll be able to tell you beforehand if a meeting is technically focused. So if you're a developer, tester, cryptographer, we'll be able to say this meeting's for you. If you're uh, someone that's geared more towards the C-suite, you're an executive, you play a more strategic role, then we'll say this is a strategic meeting, you should be the one to attend this. Similarly, we'll highlight meetings that are more operational and say, okay, this is for the ops folks. So um, we want to really drive and make sure that the future agendas are, are driven by you guys. And I want to make one last plug for joining the mortgage industry subgroup. And here's the link you guys get it in this chat as well. Karen walk you guys through joining the Linux Foundation and getting access to our wiki page. So highly encourage you guys to join. We're all very excited about this. I think we're right on time. So we have a couple minutes. We'd like to open it up to you guys and see if anyone has any questions. Mar Marvin, it's uh, Vipin. Hey, Vipin. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, this uh, uh, this group has started uh, off on such a good foot. Um, and I hope you guys have great success. And please uh, uh, join, you know, also our discussions in the capital markets. Uh, maybe we can have um, cross pollination. A couple of things. One is I was at this uh, meeting today for uh, debt uh, capital markets um, in uh, IWA, G GBBC, Global Blockchain Business Council. Uh, they are, they just announced the launch of the first bond, digital bond by six, by uh, uh, Swiss, uh, the Swiss uh, exchange, uh, which is, you know, earlier there were some bonds ex that were, that were put out, but this is the first truly digital bond. It's 400 and $50 million, uh, I mean, Swiss francs, sorry, which is about the same as $150 million. But um, anyway, so this is uh, exciting news because it's now production and people are trading. It's available on Bloomberg. Uh, it, won't be, uh, it won't be long before mortgages, mortgage bonds are going to trade like that. 
Uh, the other opportunity is with um, the fact that we are also working with with uh, Andrea to create a uh, cross pollination group. So I hope uh, you guys join us. We are going to have an actual lab, NFT based lab, uh, which will act which will actually put into production something um, that has NFTs in it. Anyway, uh, I think the time is ending, so I'm cutting my uh, remarks short. Thank you for launching such a group. Thank you for those remarks, Vipane, and thank you for your leadership and guidance. I think the point that you brought up about that bond being offered, that really underscores that capital markets is, is so key to the mortgage industry. It's kind of a leading indicator, if you will, and there's always interesting stuff happening there. So yeah, we're definitely interested in cross-pollinating. Um, I see that we have one more minute, so I did want to turn it over to see if there's anyone else that has uh, any other questions or comments. Um, if you do, uh, please let us know. Okay, um, I think the clock just did tick over to 10 o'clock. Again, thank you all for joining us for our introductory meeting to the Mortgage Subgroup. This meeting is being recorded. We'll post it on the Mortgage Subgroup Wiki. And please uh, feel free and look out, or excuse me, feel free to join our future meetings and look out for those invitations as well. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.